Okay, you guys, today we're gonna go over the FTS2 Power Rack, the new model that just arrived. Uh, a couple things you guys that we're gonna go over is the hardware first, okay? You guys are gonna notice that you guys have four and a half inch and four inch bolts, okay? So we'll go over this one. The long ones are obviously to grab uh, anything that catches three parts of the frame, two parts of the frame. Then we have a couple washers right here. You guys are gonna push these to the side a little bit, because, uh, to the side, we're not gonna use those. Um, There's the smaller diameter ones that we're gonna be using for the weight stocks, the springs for your safety, for your um, Smith bar. Then these are the spacers for the weight stacks and all the different cushions that we have. If you guys notice, there are two of them with a, a bigger diameter. That's, that's gonna be for your guiding rod um, for your Smith. These ones are gonna be for your weight stocks. Then you guys have Allen. These ones are gonna be for the frame that holds the, um, the trays in the back. And that completes your hardware. So step number one, the best thing that you guys wanna do is basically grab all your corners, make sure the numbers are facing forward, okay? On the front and the back. If you guys look at the bottom of the base, the, uh, the holes, so you, they should be on the outside just in case you guys wanna bolt these down. These are 1,200 pounds, so you don't really need to bolt them down unless you really want to, okay? So once you have basically what we call the box frame, the best thing to do is to grab your sides and the back, okay? Grab your four inch, your four inch uh, bolts to secure it in the front. You guys are gonna use your four and a half because it's gonna grab one, two, and three. Okay, so step number one was just to basically build your box frame. Okay, your front leg, remember, you have a four and a half and a four inch, so your four and a half grabs one, two, and three. So you, it's also gonna do that on the top. Your four inch hole, your four inch bolts are gonna grab just two pieces. So from here, 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 here. Now you guys can adjust this at whatever height you want, okay? You guys can, it's, it's all configuration, whatever you guys want, uh, but you want the, the ones that don't have the one inch holes, because these are gonna be for the for your bases, for your trays. One, two, three. All right, one, send two. number two before you guys put any of your crossbars on the top. You guys are gonna grab your trolley for your cable system, okay? The terminal is gonna be facing up because we're gonna be feeding the cable down around here. So you guys are gonna slide it up line up the bearings, pull it, that's one. Then you're gonna grab your jammer arm. We're gonna do the same thing. Make sure the handle is facing out. Line it up, just like that. Pull the pin to the back so you guys can slide it all the way down. Lock it in place. Yeah. Step number three, you guys are gonna grab your back post. You guys are gonna notice the holes are actually facing forward now, okay? This is gonna be for your uh, Smith bar safety, okay? And the logo, you guys are gonna notice it's gonna be facing on the outside, okay? Now, what we're gonna grab is the top bar. Everything is gonna have four inch, uh, four inch bolts. There's gonna be one, two, one, two in the back. And the front, you guys are gonna grab your lap pull down uh, pulley, and you're gonna put the four and a half inch hole on this one right here, and then your pull up bar, okay? Gonna work on the Smith bar. Okay, what you guys wanna do is grab an Allen wrench. You guys wanna loose, loosen everything up so you guys can work, okay? It doesn't matter which side you guys put it on. So you guys wanna set it this way, grab it, have somebody help you in. Okay, you guys are gonna guide it in, and we're gonna catch it in place. Throw one up. Good. Once you guys catch it in place, you guys are able to move the bar left and forward because now we're going to have to feed the uh, the guiding rods. Okay, then we're going to grab the guiding rods. Okay, what you guys want to do is to make sure that this is out of the way so you guys can go straight in. If you're going in at an angle, there's needle bearings in here, you guys are going to break the needle bearings. So, you need to make sure that the bar is going straight in. It should just go in just like that. Okay. All right, now, this is the way that you guys are gonna set it in and how you're gonna go in, okay? This is the bottom cushion that's gonna go right there, right? So, you guys are gonna grab 
the cushion that has a bigger diameter for the uh, guiding rod, it's gonna be pointing down. So we're gonna do one. Then we're gonna do the washer. That is the wider diameter. Then we're gonna do the spring. Then we're gonna do the second washer. The safety hook. It's gonna go in. It should just catch on that side, okay? Then we're gonna do this one right here. Bring it down. Once you guys bring it down, you should just go in place like this, okay? Right, boss. Then the last piece, you guys are gonna grab this one right here. You're gonna slide it in. Make sure that Al these Allen screws are loose. You're gonna line it up this way. Okay, make sure this ones are loose too, so you can go all the way in. Okay, should sit flush just like that. Lock it in place, okay? Lock all four of them so it locks the rod in place. Okay. When you guys do the second rod, since you're keeping everything loose, you should be able to just give me the bar so we can get it all the way to this side so the bar, the other rod can go straight. Again, we cannot go at an angle, so you should be able to shift the bar all the way to one side so we can clear it and get the second rod in. All right. Before you guys tie these down and fix the bar in place, you gotta make sure the gap in between uh, the sleeve or the shaft is the same on one side, same on the other. If it's not, you guys need to, you need to give me the bar to one side until you have equal distance on both sides. Right there. Once you guys do that, point them up so you guys can lock it in place. and the bar is not shifting left or right. Making sure that this doesn't have a, a, an angle to it, to it. Make sure it's a 90 degree. So you guys can lock that in place as well. Lock in place and the bar should not move. Step number five, you guys are gonna do your guiding rods. They're gonna be able to just slide in just like that. Then you're gonna grab the first insert that you're, it's gonna go in. That's gonna be at the bottom of the stack. Then you're gonna walk, grab your washer. Then your cushion is gonna be pointing, narrow side is gonna be pointing up. Make sure these are loose so they slide in. You're gonna put 19, 19 before you put the base. And the best way to do it, you guys make sure the hole is pointing in. The uh, plastic covers, the inserts, they're gonna be pointing down. The other one thing that I would suggest that you guys do is lube up the bars so they slide a little bit better and you guys can start getting that lubrication in there. Okay, continue step number five. One of the things that I suggest you guys get is a blaster silicone lubricant, okay? This is gonna keep your rods smooth, everything running perfectly. You guys wanna lube these up first before getting all the 19 stacks in there. Once you've once you got all 19, it's gonna come in three pieces just like that, okay? So you're gonna slide in your pin first, and then the top part with the pulley, the 180, you're gonna screw it all the way in. Light it up. All the way in. You guys lock the last, the last weight in place. Then you guys are going to slide your rods in. Okay. Use the Allen to lock it in place from the top. Make sure you guys do both sides. There's one on this side, on the inside, and at the bottom. Lock it in place. Out and in. That completes your stack. Right, step number six, we're gonna run the cables. There's a long cable that connects uh, from your glider. It's gonna go all the way out through the chamber. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys, you also get, you notice you're gonna get these pieces that are separate, okay? So it's got the little Allen screws right there. They should have a little baggie in there. So 
It's really easy to assemble. We'll put together three of them right there. The way that you're gonna do it is you're gonna feed this one in first, then that one to lock it in place. One thing to make sure is that it's flush all the way in. You're gonna be able to see the cable on the other side. Start from the bottom first, okay? Let it click as much as you guys can because there's gonna be 220 pounds of tension or more than that. And the last thing that you want is you're lifting the full stack and this thing is gonna come off. So you're gonna see that it's almost bending inside, which is completely fine. Lock it all the way in as much as you can, okay? Then it's a hexagon, so, well, an octagon actually. Slide it in. Pull it until you can't see them anymore. Then we're gonna run the cable. So this one, we already put it together. The one thing that you guys are gonna have to do, you're gonna have to remove the pulleys, okay? Especially when you guys remove the one in the front, you gotta make sure there's a way that you can hold it because if you pull it out and the pulley goes in, you're gonna have to disassemble this piece right here. So you gotta make sure that um, when you guys pull them out, there's a way to grab it or somebody's helping you out so it doesn't slide in and then you're gonna have to take this uh, front piece off. So it's gonna look like this. Once the cable is in, okay, once you have this piece that I just put together, right, you guys are gonna feed it through the middle, the middle two pulleys right here. You're gonna bring it down. The cable, the pulleys are not gonna be on. So, for example, this one, you go this way. And, there's a one and a half inch hole on every post. So you guys have to kind of just play around with it until you get it to the other side. Okay, once you get the cable through, then put the first pulley in, bolts out to in. This time you don't have to worry about the cable going in because you have the cable holding the pulley right there. Then we're gonna bring it all the way up to the first pulley this way in between through that chamber. This one. Okay. You know there's a pulley here because there's a bolt right here. There's one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're gonna go through the first one. Then we're gonna bring it down to the 180. All right, once you go through that 180, then we're gonna go through the second pulley. Okay, this is where you guys need something, a little fine tip to try to guide it and somebody helping you out, holding the cable just in case that you lose it, it doesn't retract on you. Then, so we're gonna go through the first, second pulley, third pulley down. Then you guys are gonna have your 180 this way. Go through the fourth pulley. Good. And we're gonna bring it all the way back. Something fine to guide it. Okay, tell it. Good, it's gonna come out. Make sure it's not overlapping on the other one. Here it comes. Good, keep going, keep going, keep going. All the way back. Uh, takes a little bit of patience. Good. Then we're gonna bring it over this pulley right here. And it's gonna come all the way down to the terminal right here. Pause. Good, for right now, just tie it in place, but not too tight, because we have to make adjustments. So just to, so you guys just lock it one in place, so you can do the second short cable, which is 
which is the, the, long, the other long one. You guys are gonna bring it to between both pulleys. There's a chamber in here. Make sure you guys feed it through. Bring it all the way to the other side, to the back. Back, the back pulley right here. There's a one and a half inch hole right there that's gonna feed all the way down to the 180. Once you go through that 180, it's gonna stop on the other 180 right here. Feed it all the way through. Until you have a little bit of tension, and then you can you guys can fine tune it, lock it in place. Good. Good. Once you have this one in place, just lock it all the way in again, as much as you guys can, because we're gonna do the adjustment from the front. Okay. Now, when you guys do the adjustment, what you guys want to do is you're able to selectorize the last weight. Okay. See that? There's about three inch gap right here. So you guys can make your adjustment through this one right here. It's loose. Good. We're gonna feed it through until there's about a one, a one inch gap right there. One finger, once you have it right there, lock it in place. You should be able to select all your pins, okay? And there it is. One of the revisions that we did on the uh, on the uh, lap pull down to prevent the pulley from twisting, just in case that it does. There's a three piece cable tension that runs all the way from the bottom to the top, attached to this one right here to prevent the twisting. This one goes at the bottom right here, goes from the outside. You can also do it from the inside if you like. It's completely up to you. One thing is on the outside, it might get, uh, uh, in the, the cable might get in the way of the weights. So you guys can do it on the inside, so I'll show you guys how to do it on the inside. This one's gonna go down here. This one's gonna go on the top, can be on the outside on the inside again. And then this one is gonna go on this pull right here, and then there's a cable that runs all the way down. All right. The one thing I would suggest you guys do once you guys have it on the inside, to switch this one right here because there's tension on the cable, bring the stack up. Lock it in place right there, so there's a little bit of a slack right there. Then grab your 11 16s, or I believe it's a 17, 17 millimeter or 18 millimeter. So you guys can remove this one and switch it for the eyelid. That's gonna go like that. Okay. Once you guys replace the eyelid, you guys lock it in place to make sure that it's uh, 90 degrees from the floor, parallel from the floor. The fourth pulley is the one that you're gonna remove. Have somebody help you hold it right there in place, so you guys can swap it out for this one right here. The pulley is gonna, you need to hold that pulley in place. put the cable for the tension what you guys want to do is make sure you have at least half an inch to an inch gap because the way to do the tension once you put the cable in is you're gonna twist it you're gonna keep twisting it until it keeps tension it builds tension on that uh, on the cable so feed it through the top feed it Lock it in place. You can make your adjustments. Run the cable through the eyelid. So, okay, now you guys can drop this one for sure. Good. So it's in the eyelid. You're gonna feed it through here. Just pull it to the bottom. Just pull it as hard as you can. You guys can lock it in place. what's gonna give tension to this one is that you guys are gonna twist, 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 twist as hard as you can. And then the lock nut, the 
-hmm. Lock nut right here, just to lock it in place so it doesn't twist back. The trays, you guys have two of them. Again, it's, it's completely up to you where you guys want to put it or whether you guys want to put it or not. The Allen bolts that we had at the beginning, they're going to go right here. So it locks in place. When you guys assemble your lap pull down uh, seat, very simple, just two bolts this way. The best way for you guys to know that you're inserting the pad the correct way is obviously the pin is up and you guys will see the insert is right there. If you guys try to insert it from the other side, you're not gonna be able to do that. Retract the pin so you guys can slide it in. That is your lap pull down. Your rowing station is very, very easy to put together. Two 19 millimeter bolts right here, right? Just make sure you guys, same thing as far as the rowing goes. Feet are down this way. Attach it that way. Good. Fifth pulley was added to the machine. This is kind of to do like weight, weighted um, exercises. You guys can turn the cable however you want. Uh, best way to adjust it, you guys bring the pulley all the way to the top. It'll feed through there. It's attached to a belt or a pull-up bar or anything like that. Again, if it feels like it's a little bit too long, um, these are gonna be completely detached so you guys can just trim it down wherever you guys want or you can just leave it high that way, back up a little more. You know, it's up to you guys. When doing the leg extension, it's gonna come in uh, four pieces. So this is gonna be completely off. It just needs to slide in, locks in place. The Allen um, bolt right here, you know, to hold the pivot point. Your pad is gonna hold four Allen bolts right there. And your selector race right there. It's pretty simple to put together. One of the questions that I get a lot is, how do you attach the uh, the leg press? It has this pull pins right here. You just basically just place it on the shaft, retract them, and it just locks in place. The best way to set up for a lap pull down is to bring the trolley up. You guys can adjust this on number four or number five, as high as number five. And you can bring the gem arm down. You have enough room, you guys can just lock it in place right there. Good. All right, guys. Uh, one of the things that I would suggest when you guys are using a lap pull down and when you guys are setting up your uh, cross members in the back, if you guys, like I mentioned earlier, you can place this on the inside or the outside, okay? Now, the one thing is if you guys place it on the inside, the tray, is that the tray? The tray is gonna hit. the uh, eyelid, so if we were to place it right there, it's going to hit, right? Now, there are some chains, because this time, you know, this bar, it is a little bit high, especially from where you're pulling down, so you guys actually have, you have the option to either use your extension, bring me another camera. sure that the eyelid doesn't hit when you're coming down the tray or you guys can adjust your cross this is actually a little bit high it should be a little bit lower preference right it should be a little bit lower so you can stack like kettlebells dumbbells um, here in the back 